Welcome to Worship for Ash Wednesday at Christ the King Lutheran Church. A couple announcements before we begin. First of all, you're invited to light a candle in your home where you are worshiping. Uh, again, we are collecting food for RACAP, the 40 Cans of Lent program, and so we invite you to participate. Uh, you can bring the cans into the sanctuary, into the narthex at any point uh, now, between now and the end of Lent, and our outreach committee members will uh, shuttle that food over to RACAP where it is needed. Our midweek Lenten meals, while different this year because of the pandemic, are still we're still inviting everyone together for a sense of fellowship and, and mealtime. We will be publishing a recipe, a favorite recipe from one family each week of the church. And you're invited to make that if you wish, or you can make your own meal. And then we'll join together on Zoom and have fellowship and enjoy our food together. And then uh, about six o'clock, um, 6.30 or so, we will uh, watch. We, we're offering a worship watch event where in our still in our Zoom meeting, we can watch the worship that's being recorded from the various members of our church who are offering thoughts and helping uh, with our liturgy and, and different components of worship. So we invite you to experience those aspects of Lent. And uh, Vicar Ricardo has a prayer bead practice that he is uh, going to be leading us through in the season of Lent. And so uh, now I invite Vicar Ricardo to offer a word. Yes, I um, actually post uh, some information in Facebook already. Uh, we're going to be using uh, the prayer, uh, Protestant prayer beads for the Lent uh, as part of our, our prayer practice journey. Uh, so if you are interested, let us know, uh, any of the staff, Pastor Mike, Margaret, Marisa, or myself, to, to reserve one of, uh, of our prayer beats and, and join us. Uh, I'm going to be posting a video every week, and we're going to meet uh, on Zoom uh, to practice two, twice, actually, uh, during Lent uh, on Tuesday, because on Wednesday we have what Pastor Mike already announced. So. Thank you. And uh, we also at the back of our bulletin tonight is a finger labyrinth is another way that you're invited to pray during the season of Lent. Uh, the instructions are in the bottom, but basically you just use your finger and follow the path and you pray and meditate therein. Uh, now for tonight's service, we had invited everyone to collect these bags to come to church and get these bags that have a variety of things which we will use in the worship service tonight. However, we realize with the road conditions and the weather, everybody may not have been able to get them. And so that's okay. Uh, you can still worship without these items. It was just a way that we were trying to encourage uh, more interaction uh, with uh, our worship this evening. And now let us worship. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God in our homes and across the miles. We gather together in the name in which we live, the name in which we baptize, in the name of the triune God, the one God, the one whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, and whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Now let us join together in our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we begin our invitation to Lent. We are a perfect combination of dust, dirt, bone, and spirit. Today we enter the season of Lent. Forty days of reflection, faithful practice, and spiritual transformation as we approach the implications and invitation of the cross. During Lent, we remember that Jesus Christ 
loves us enough to not ignore the tough stuff. We remember and are moved by a God that lived and hoped and struggled and healed and died among us so that we will live grounded, generous, and liberated lives. This is the time to grieve for what still breaks our bodies and hearts and to be moved toward holy care and the work of justice to which it calls us. This is a season for the cleansing and clearing of space so that something new might grow. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation so that we do not enjoy the life our creator intended. In Jewish tradition, the wearing of ashes in a marker of this, is a marker of this mourning and renewal. In Christian tradition, this day is often marked as Ash Wednesday, as a way of lament and transformation. This is a day to bring us face to face with the nearness of death and to remind us of our connection to creation and each other. In this time of COVID-19, every time we walk out our door or recognize that we won't be walking out our door, we are reminded of the fragile nature of life and the way it affects us as a whole community. Rooted in divine love and promised liberation, we are free to be honest about ourselves and our world, to reflect on our lives and systems and dwell in God's abundant grace. As we gather for this service, we pray that you will be anchored in the promise and presence of the living God. In the softness of evening, in the solace of silence, we come to you, O God. We come together to mark the season of Lent, to begin a journey to the cross. We come alongside one another for the blessing of community in the face of loneliness, a source of sacred strength, for you are with us. We come for acceptance. We come for respect. We come for wholeness. We come for peace. We come for comfort. We come for forgiveness and love. We come for the path we struggle to find. We come for the healing you promised to share. We come to you for our lives are heavy with sin and sorrow. You fill us with breath and you refresh our being. Guide us throughout these 40 days as we learn to lean into your embrace. And as we draw near to the cross, release us from all that separates us from each other and from you. May we know your presence is always with us. The power of your transformative love is within us. And may we know your grace surrounds us and is beyond us. In the name of Jesus, our companion on this journey of faith, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, it has been our practice when we've led Ash Wednesday worship services in the church uh, that we have a vase of black sand sitting in the baptismal font. And during the confession, we slowly add more sand to it. Now, if you have your bag of your bundle of materials, one of the items that was in here was a box of sand. And you are invited during the confession to either write your name, uh, not your name, your, your uh, sins or your confessions in the sand as you wish, or you can just draw different patterns in there uh, as, as you want. And so uh, we invite you to get your box of sand out and to do that as you wish, as we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, our excessive love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, the wrongs we have done. Accept our repentance for our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Have mercy on us, Lord. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Amen. Now, we're trying something new this year, uh, given that we're doing Ash Wednesday at home. In your bundle of materials is a little bu uh, container of bubbles. And so you're invited to uh, open the bubbles and to blow some bubbles as you are discussing or reflecting on the, the decisions that you've made in life that uh, you may be sorry for, the wrongs that you've done, uh, and then also talk if you're with others or reflect about ways that you can do better, ways that you can uh, pray uh, with God to face the consequences of your choices and what you can do, help, asking God to help you do better, to make uh, those bad choices come out more positive. And when you're finished, uh, please sit and meditate as we allow time for others to finish uh, with larger groups of people. Am I One in the of the room? other items that we included in your bundle of materials is a little packet of seeds. And there is a blessing on here for Ash Wednesday with a passage from Isaiah chapter 43. And it talks about God breathing life into dirt and dust. And so you're invited to scatter these wildflower seeds somewhere in your yard. Uh, and there, there's also in the, the bundle of material uh, a sheet of paper with the instructions and the how to do it and all of those components. Uh, but so you're invited just to, to see what comes forth from scattering these seeds. And so now we continue with the imposition of ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that we are your creations and we will always be your creation. Everything we do should show that we are yours in how we live, in how we die, in how we think and treat other people. And may we remember that it is only by your grace and through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are given eternal life. To the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
in your bundle of materials was a, a, a plastic envelope of ashes. And so I invite you now uh, as an individual or family to get those out and to mark the ashes upon one another's foreheads or to do mark the ashes on your own forehead. Uh, saying these words to one another or hearing them from me now. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And to allow time for families of different sizes to uh, impose ashes, we will, uh, Pastor Vicar Ricardo and I will read the uh, Psalm 51 responsibly. And then as you finish imposition of ashes, you are invited to uh, join us in reading Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Creating me a clean heart, O oh God. So, so you, you are, are justified, justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be poorer than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. At this point, if you did write your confessions in the box of sand, I invite you to, to scatter it, to wipe it clean, to erase it, uh, just as our, our sins have all been erased by the, the death of Christ upon the cross. And now, our first scripture reading is Joel, the second chapter, selected verses. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, 
Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, that I have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look this small like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I'll tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For more your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We have heard the echo of this daunting declaration of our dust-born origins and dust-being destiny repeatedly and in so many ways during our new year-long pilgrimage through the coronavirus wilderness. The ashes of our frail, failing mortality have been imposed on us again and again, and some ashes and dust are of our own making. 500,000 half a million, dead from the pandemic in this country alone. Not to mention the millions of family members and friends from whom this loved one has been bereaved. Thousands more whose lives have been detoured and distorted by the virus and its collateral damage, like lost jobs, lost time, lost futures and dreams. In so many places and relationships, the depth of our inequities and iniquities have been revealed. The ashes of our frail, failing mortality have been imposed on us again and again. And some of these ashes and dust are of our own making. And so this day, we yet again trace the baptismal mark of Christ with the dust of our days. On this day, we are invited to take a journey within us through prayer. This day, we are invited to open up and discover all that has caused separation between us and between God. This day, we are invited to acknowledge our faults and amend, and amend them through repentance with the help of our God, who is compassionate and merciful. In today's Gospel, Jesus invites us to pray. He invites us to be honest with ourselves, to enter a room, to close the door, and to pray to our Father who sees in secret. Jesus wants us to have a relationship with the Triune God, and if we are from this relationship, if we are far from this relationship, rectify, take a radical turn, and change direction. Repentance means true conversion. It means changing direction. There is no clearer example than Psalm 51, where we see that true confession belongs to repentance, 
where God's forgiveness is bestowed upon us by restoring us a new beings as new creations. This uh, psalm is a, is a reflection in which we see ourselves and where the psalmist begins with his own lament, a lament that may be also be ours. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. In this lament, we are reflected. I think it is a projection of our human nature. It is a projection of our finite condition or our finite condition that is not always strong in the face of temptation and stumbling. This psalm is a reminder that leads us to analyze ourselves deeply and in this reflection to discover how we have acted to ourselves, how we have acted to our, our community and to our God. In this lament, in this confession of sin, the psalmist implores and pleads, recognizing the unique character of God. He knows that the God he prays to and pleads with is a merciful God a compassionate God and a wavering love. The psalmist knows far within him that this sublime character of God is much greater than evil, than the sin and guilt he expresses in his lament. In this, in this act of repentance and remorse, we can only imagine, we can only pretend to imagine uh, King David devastated, afflicted, and distressed, with his face full of tears and despair as he confronted his own truth, a truth that only the prophet Nathan, in the name of the Lord, has declared to him. Why have you despised the Lord by doing what is evil in his sight? It is the voice of the prophet who invites David to repentance. It is the voice that leads David to penetrate within him and discover his fault by crying out, I have sinned against the Lord. Many times we need this external voice or perhaps an event outside of us to be presented to us, to penetrate and embark on the journey into our interior where denial no longer makes sense. David lived in denial of his sin until the prophet's voice discovered, discovered it to him. For, Davis, for David, this uh, outward voice was that of the prophet Nathan. For us, it can be the voice of our loved ones, our parents, families, our friends, who care and dare to challenge us, inviting us to return and live in harmony with ourselves, with our community, and with God. Maybe this outside voice will yell at us when we have already hit rock bottom, when we have experienced the self-destructive consequences of suffering, loneliness, and doubt. Sin and its consequences tarnish everything. This Psalm 51 is not a psalm about David alone. It is a, it is a psalm about ourselves. It is an ever-present reflection of our own reality, of our own finitude. How many times have we felt like the psalmist? How many times, because of our faults, have we separated from God and ourselves? Can we recognize the moments when we have distanced ourselves from God? Paul Tillich, a Lutheran theologian, understood sin as a separation. He told us that being in this state of separation 
is being in a state of sin. When we are in sin, we experience the separation of ourselves, the separation of our community, the separation from God. In this state of separation, God is, is no, it's not important to us. We do not want to seek God or be available to God. We don't need God because we are busy chasing our own self-gratification. In this state of separation, we lose God as our center in an attempt to be ourselves, to position ourselves to be the center of everything. In this state of separation, we are very busy believing that we are the best of all creation and that the whole universe is only for our own benefit. That we are here to exercise dominion over every living being moving on earth. In this state of separation, definitely God is not our priority. The good news, the good news in this psalm is what says about the divine nature of a God who forgives sinners and creates new people. David is, is an example of that. The same voice of the prophet Nathan who makes David look at his fault it's the same voice that tells him, the Lord forgives your sin, you will not die. The psalmist asking for mercy understands the nature and consequences of sin. With humility, he acknowledges his guilt and humbly asks for mercy. By his prayer, he empties himself and allows God to fill that space. He knows that he can trust in a merciful God, creating me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. It is in this act of courage acceptance and repentance of our faults, that God's love has already forgiven us and wrapped us with God's arms. This is an act where we confess in the intimate and in our community that we have lived through despair, that we have been broken and separated. Only when we recognize and accept our fragility, our fracture, our vulnerability and separation is where we can be open to being healed by God's grace and mercy. For it is in the brokenness, in the darkness, that the light of God shines in our hearts. God's grace is, is more powerful than any human reality. By the grace of God, despite our fragmented and finite nature, there will always be a new creation. This is our prayer. This is our supplication. A creation where a clean heart is possible and a firm spirit is rene renewed within us. Ashes. We just put our ashes in our head. Ashes are death because that's what ashes are. The death of three branches. Placing ashes on the head symbolically places death on our heads. But death is not placed there in condemnation. Rather, like all our readings for today, they point to restoration and hope. Death is placed upon our heads to remind us that death gives way to life. This is the Paschal mystery. This is what it means to live as a believer in the world. It is what we are supposed to give witness to every day of our lives. In this extraordinary time in our human history, when death seems to have so strong a hold over us, this year's entrance into the disciplines of Lent remind us of who and what we must be as believers. Ashes placed upon the seed of wisdom upon the head, our front head, enable us to begin 
once again to remember if we profess that with the resurrection of Christ, death has lost his, its sting, that no longer has power over us. It's not an ending, but a change in human life. We receive ashes to begin the journey from death to life. Receiving ashes commission us to give witness to our congregation, our communities, our world, that God has won the victory over death. It is God who leads us out of darkness into God's own wonderful light. A redirection and adaptation to the way ashes are received may seem like a subtle change. Yet, God works best through subtleness. I want to finish with a, with a short reflection which also can be used as practice for Lent that was shared to me by, by Pastor Mike. Uh, it is from Rabbi Sincha Bunim. Uh, the rabbi teaches and suggests that we should have two pockets. In one pocket should be a piece of paper saying, I am only dust and ashes. And I think we can only, we can also use our sackcloth cross in that pocket. And when you are feeling too proud, reach into this pocket and take out this paper and read it. In the other, in the other pocket should be a piece of paper saying, for my sake was the world created. When you are feeling disheartened and lowly, reach into this pocket and take this paper out and read it. We are each the joining of two worlds. We are fashioned from clay, but our spirit is the breath of God. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I encourage you now to take a moment and text a message of peace or greeting to someone, uh, a friend or loved one who is not in your household, uh, who could use some encouragement. And now we continue with our service of communion, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and heavenly God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And now I invite you to join in praying the Lord's Prayer in whichever version you prefer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Whoever you are or wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome at God's table. God keeps adding places to the table, so come to the banquet that has no end, where there is room for everyone. Beloved of God, come and be fed. I invite you now to distribute communion in your home, uh, hearing these words for me, from me, or saying them to one another the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Bring us with all your sins to the joy of his resurrection. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now remember, wherever it is that you go and whatever it is that you do, God has called us forth from the dust of the earth. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we join in singing our sending hymn, Be Thou My Vision, number 793. Mm -hmm. 